Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my kit videos. In this kit video, I'm going to show you the new suppressor I've got for my DMR build. And I'm also going to show you what I'm going to do to this to modify it, to see if we can reduce that muzzle output a little bit more. So uh, this particular suppressor I bought from Skirm Shop. It's a relatively cheap one at £10. Um, I've, I've had a couple of them now. They work absolutely fantastic, but like I say, they do need a little bit of modification. So I'm going to show you what I do with them. Um, there is a little bit of theory involved behind this. So um, if you just bear me two seconds, I'll set this up for you. So uh, in the airsoft world, when we have our, our gun, if you like, so here's your muzzle, your, your barrel, everything's here. It goes bang. So what happens then is the sound output, when as it comes out of your, your muzzle, pretty much just wants to expand. So uh, the way around that obviously is by putting a suppressor on, which is a long cylindrical can, and then that stops the sound from expanding. And in the airsoft world, what that does in, in a metal can like this is the sound expands, hits the walls and comes back. And then it just kind of bounces all the way down until it gets to the end of your suppressor which is generally a little bit thinner than the main can so you end up stopping a lot of that output now what you can do is you can get these kind of donuts um kind of like foam donut things these are ones which i've collected from a few suppressors uh, as i've been modifying them over time and you can put them in a row down the middle of your suppressor like that and then what happens is as the sound comes out, out there, it hits them and it loses a bit and then it loses a bit and then it loses a bit and it loses a bit. But the problem with that is that these are quite a smooth surface. And if you end up stacking them and you don't have any difference in the size of them, you just end up creating a tunnel. And all that does then is the sound will just go straight through that tunnel and you'll see it out the other end. So um whilst it is good if you put some spaces in between them and you can cut them into shapes so that you know they can kind of intercept that sound a bit more it is better uh but what i'm going to do i'm going to show you um something i picked up mostly from the vsr and mk23 world um and that's kind of how to do the insides of these so as a suppressor when they come out of the packet i mean they come in a plastic packet i think the brand of them is called metal or m etal or something like metal um it's basically a three-part suppressor you have your muzzle adapter here so this is a 14 mil negative and then that just goes onto a positive thread which in itself is a problem so when you're screwing this on anti-clockwise to get it nice and tight uh, the moment you get this bit tight, you go on this, this cracks, and then the whole thing comes apart. So what I normally tend to do when I've built the foam bit into my suppressor is I'll just use a touch of Gorilla Glue, and then I'll just grab that, and I'll just kind of put it on the threads there, um, and then set the suppressor so that when I do tighten it up, it, it, you know, there's a bit of resistance there. It's not going to crack open straight away. So I'm going to put that piece to one side there. And then the end piece here, uh, you can see this is quite a nice decorative one. You get uh, plain ones and you get these and you can get them ported as well. Um, personally, I don't think ported is a great idea because it just leaves more room for sound to escape. So that's very similar to the other end as well. You can see there they've both got the same threads on them. So if I wanted to, I could flip it around and I could have that bit there or I could have that bit there or it really doesn't matter too much. The bit I'm interested in is this middle piece and in these boop. so you have uh, two more pieces of foam so you want to, to kind of support this spring uh, either side and then you have this spring which I guess is just to keep the foam pieces in place um, yeah that's about it and I suppose if you put anything else on all round it's there just to give you a bit of clearance for your BB going down it as well now I'm not a massive fan of these uh, the springs aren't great and in my mind if this sound is going into there and it is trying to expand there is potential that it's going to reflect off the insides of that spring so the spring is always the first thing to go for me I'm going to put that piece of foam there and I'm going to put that piece of foam there they're going to come in handy a bit later but the spring is definitely going in the bin now what I want to do is I want to give my nice cylindrical tube as you can see there it's nice and flat and clean and and perfect and sound will bounce down the middle of that with absolutely no problem if i were to just put this together and put it on now you get a lovely bloop 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 
kind of sound as sound went down it so i want to avoid that um so you need something which has got surface area now i can go to town and cut these apart and do weird and wacky wonderful things but what i can also do is use a scouring pad now a scouring pad is fantastic because in itself it is foam um but what it also is it is incredibly rough so what i'm going to do i'm going to take one out of the packet here these are minky brand uh, i picked these up from a local home store uh these are the kind of thing that your mum does the dishes with when she's got grease baked on and she doesn't use fairy um they're very rough as you can see there i'll just turn it slight side on so it's very rough very uneven profile and the general idea behind that is if you fold that into a oh, into a tube you can see there the inside of that tube is not not very uniform so if there is sound trying to expand into that it's going to get wrapped up in in all these little pockets of air and and kind of foam so it, it's it's perfect really for filling with these so foam filling these suppressors with so um three of these cost me one pound fifty so i'm lucky enough that this one actually uh is only just too short so the first thing you want to do when you're doing these really is measure it so uh, i've had shorter suppressors where it's been absolutely fine to turn it that way and cut it to shape uh, but this one i'm going to use at its full length because as you can see there the full length plus the foam is actually just a little bit too big so i'm going to end up trimming something down so uh to get it to fit we don't just we're not just going to stuff it in what we're going to do is we're going to uh wrap it round uh we're going to bend it into an oval shape and see if it fits now i'm fairly sure it won't it's going to be too big and if it's too big what you end up doing is you end up crushing it and it ends up closing your gap so what i will generally tend to do is i mean first thing we'll do is it won't go around the outside uh, you won't be able to see there very well but you can just see that there is an overlap so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bend one side in there stuff it to the edges and then measure it so think about there now i've got three of these pads so if i do screw up it's absolutely fine i can screw up another couple of times if we go a little bit too small again it's not the end of the world and we're going to cut as uniform a line along there as we can it doesn't have to be absolutely exact but if it is relatively straight it's a bonus so let's have a look at my cutting skills there uh, i think we're pretty decent so then we're gonna wrap it up you will make a bit of a mess with this don't use your mother's best scissors so what we're gonna do we're gonna test fit that in there so what we what we're looking for is the two ends rather than meeting at a T. So we want the two ends to meet perfectly like that. And the foam does need a little bit of manipulation to get it in, because if you do end up meeting them in a T, you're going to have one side which is actually going to stick in further than the other, and that's going to be really bad. And I can see already that uh, it's not quite fitting how I want it to. So we'll try it again. It's not awful, but it could probably just do with another little shave. So what we'll do, I'll keep shaving the same side down just for uniformity. There we go, and you can see now look, all the bits are starting to fall off. Absolutely plaster my desk. So that's a bit better. So what we'll do, we'll fold it over, fold it over, fold it over. Apologies if my hands get in the way of the camera. It's not the easiest thing to be doing. Certainly not while you're trying to show somebody on a camera, which is at a weird angle to where you sit. So that's going in now. And we'll push that in, push that in. And we'll just keep pushing it out, making sure it fits in, making sure that it sits, that those two ends are kind of sitting like that rather than like that. And that's just going to make sure that my gap through the middle stays there and stays uniform. Now, that's not actually awful. So first test fit on there. 
What I'll do is I'll hold that one up and I will show you. You should be able to see that. So we can, I, I would say a BB would fit through there. It, it would fly through, but there's clearly a little bit of, of work that we need to do, uh, but not awful. And then we're, we're quite clear of the threads. We've got a bit of a gap one end, we've got a bit of a gap the other. Now I know on this DMR project, uh, the inner barrel actually sits to about there. So I'm not going to lose too much sleep over that. Uh, I can just push it forward and I will just pack it out with foam. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open it out. I uh, don't think we're particularly longer in any one side than the other. Slight trim off just to make sure that the fit is pretty decent and it just kinks off at the end there. So I'm going to take that kink off the end and then that should do it okay so now uh this is where the kind of the the tweaker in me comes in tweaker so that's probably the wrong term tweaker's a druggy isn't it anyway um just trying to get it right really just refining things so what i'll do now is i'll kind of get the ends about right where i want them and I'll tape them. Now, this tape won't stick straight to this stuff, to this foam. It's not designed to, to stick this kind of stuff together. But what it will do is it will stick to itself. And what it will also do is provide a smoother surface for it to push in. So when that bit in the middle where it wasn't quite fitting as well as I wanted it to, it will fit better this time round because the the pad isn't going to be working against the out the inside of the suppressor so there's always a there's always room for improvement with everything we do whether it's making a stupid suppressor in it or anything in general always pays just to take that extra little bit of time sometimes and go that one step further this is kind of the approach I take to everything that I do with my airsoft. I always try and refine, refine, refine. Sometimes those single digit percentages make all of the difference to what you're doing. And sometimes it's just quality of life as well. So when I build this suppressor, what I don't want to be doing is having to hollow it out every five minutes, uh, getting BBs stuck in it and all the other good things that you get with some of these suppressors where when you go a little bit overboard with, with things that they can end up doing. So that's taped in. And then it'll kind of hold its own tube as well, which is quite nice. And then what we'll do is the suppressor itself will give it some rigidity. I think I've probably done that a little bit tight, but... What we can also do now is we can stretch it out a bit inside there, get some fingers in there, get it hollowed out a bit. A uh, big screwdriver of doom can go in and can kind of flash it out. I'm just kind of wrapping it around the inside there. That's a bit better. And then we don't have to be shy of doing this either. We can really, really thrash it around. out so you can actually see through there it was starting to get a, a fairly coherent hole so like i was saying we don't have to worry too much about it not being absolute perfect fit at both ends and then one of the pieces which did fit well i mean i've got a couple of pieces here that's not a bad fit i'm gonna just drop that in just to and finish up now you can see it's not absolutely perfect through there by any means but with a little bit of uh kind of adjustment it will so what i'm going to do now is contrary to my usual approach i'm going to take this tape off because i actually think the tape is now holding it together which Whilst that is a good thing, it will hold its shape and it has helped me to slide it in. 
it's stopping it as you can see there from expanding and if it expands uh, it's going to clear that hole through the middle a little bit so this isn't a problem I've had with my other suppressors as my other ones they've kind of generally expanded themselves out but again it's really not life ending it does that it just means I can get a clearer channel through the middle a little bit more airflow yeah a bit happy with that okay not sure about that might put one of these in yeah that's better so that's a better fit so what i'm going to do now is just run that down so i'm going to put the end piece on because the uh the pad's going to sit against the end piece so that's on push that down as far as it'll go without uh kind of squashing it because if you squash it then you're gonna have some problems and then we can see that that is far too big so what i'm gonna do with that I'm going to half it, I think. Oh, crispy scissors. Then I'm going to put the rough bit into there. Put this end back on. That's pretty damn decent. And BB is going to fly through there without too many problems. Obviously, there is a little bit of leftover in the middle there, which um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, uh, again, long long in instruments, screwdriver, um, maybe a barrel cleaning rod would be probably better for this. And I'm just going to kind of pull it against one side and then just kind of run it around a few times. So rather than it, it kind of, rather than twizzling down the middle, it's going to kind of go off center and and do that and it will just take those straggly bits off if not they will just shoot off throwing little bits of foam they're absolutely fine but for the most part that is a, a pretty good finish there Whoop. so yeah happy with that uh, and like i say what i'll probably do now is i'll glue up this end uh, off camera and then that will be the end of my suppressor so that is how I modify my suppressors. Um, apologies, I've not got a before and after shooting test, um, but I just wasn't prepared and ready to do this video uh, apart from doing the, the middle bit. So thank you very much if you've made it this far. Uh, hopefully this has been a little bit helpful for you, if at all. Um, please drop my video a like. Please, by all means, find me any comments back. And uh, I would absolutely love it if you could drop me a sub as well. I am absolutely aiming to make the big 500 uh in within the first year of me having this channel so every sub helps and i absolutely appreciate every single one of you who are watching liking and commenting on my videos and subbing to me thank you very much and i will catch you in the next one